uh, counter statement on sutural valve already the standard of care. Thank you very much. Uh, I'd like to Thank you. Uh, Thank remind you. you, please keep to the time yes, schedule yes, because yes, we are uh, running out of time. Well, uh, I think the issue into my mind more than the pro or against the rapid deployment of aortic valve is really I mean, a question. Do we improve outcome with rapid deployment aortic valve compared to standard surgical valve? I mean, if you look into the literature, over the last few years there have been quite a lot of papers published and uh, the results report have been sort of sometime in contrast between, between them. And I want to show you some of the data. This is uh, a multicenter randomized control trial which compared uh, rapid release valve uh, position through an upper hemisternotomy uh, uh, compared to Edward intuitive valve using a full steroid approach. Basically, in this paper, the results were quite gratifying for the rapid deployment valve with uh, shorter cross clamp time as overall better uh, valvar hemodynamics. But then if we move to this other trial, again, we are focusing at the moment on, on the intuitive valve. This is another single center comparison study between intuitive valve and magna valve. Uh, basically, um, patients that had, as you can see, had the conventional valve, about 60% of them had the full sternotomy. If you go into the minimum rapid deployment valve, about 60% had a minimal invasive approach. Again, this paper results were completely opposite. There was no difference in terms of overall cross clamp time, cardiopulmonary bypass time, and procedural time. And also, it is a very important point, what quite a significant increase in need of pacemaker post op in the patients that had a rapid release uh, valve implanted. Moving to the trinitrol trial, which is a European trial, prospective non randomized single arm multicentral trial using the intuitive valve. I mean, here the patients were divided basically in three groups. Uh, one who had the operation done through an upper sternotomy, one full sternotomy, and the third group of patients had the right anterior mini thoracotomy. Interesting enough, the patients that had the operation done through a right anterior mini thoracotomy, as you can see, uh, had very long cross clamp time and bypass time. But again, if we look at the, the final result, paradoxically, the patient who had the longest operation are the one who had the best results in terms of length of hospital stay, ICU stay, and also with regard to hospital mortality, they had the lowest mortality. Though, again, these data are not really significant because of the small number of the patient population in each of the three different groups. But as a whole, results with this trial were extremely good for the sutureless valve with low hospital mortality, low need of waste maker, and uh, shorter time, particularly in the upper sternotomy group, for, uh, the, um, and therefore, again, supporting the use of this valve for a minimal invasive approach. Then if you move to the transform trial, which has been uh, recently published, this uh, American trial corresponding to European one, again, prospecting non-randomized single arm multicentral trial with intuitive valve, over 800 patients, 60% on full sternotomy, 40% on uh, a minimal invasive approach. Again, if we had the cross clamp time were shorter compared to the data taken from the STS database, but in fact, on this trial, there was a 14% incidence of pacemaker, which is, of course, particularly high, and in 9% of the patient, there was some degree on perivalvular leak. So again, there are two points which, in fact, were present in this trial, but not detected in the previous one. If we move to the uh, Perceval valve, again, in this paper, we can find that, uh, again, comparing uh, sutureless with uh, a standard valve, the comparison was made by using a propensity score. Again, basically, shorter cross clamp and bypass time is really a standard in terms of uh, results on the rapid release valve. But in fact, there was a very high rate of pacemaker in, in uh, implantation with no difference in terms of mortality. So the result basically from this paper are, yes, reduces ischemic and bypass time, high need of pacemaker, but really no significant difference in terms of mortality and, and morbidity. Other paper which has focused just on the rhythm problem, again, on the Perceval valve, quite significant incidence of uh, rhythm problem, and if you look at the final result, basically 23% of patients in this study underwent implantation of pacemaker after the, after the use of uh, uh, rapid deployment aortic valve. And finally, I want to show you the data from this other paper. In this paper, basically, was looked at patients with a small uh, aortic annulus, less than 21 ml, and basically four different techniques were used, stented valve, aortic root enlargement, stentless valve, and sutureless valve. Well, basically, 
if you look at the final results in terms of mean postoperative gradient, we can see that the uh, sutureless valve, so the stentless valve, the one with the best results on, this, on the small annulus, among the stented valve, the trifecta was reported in this study to be the one with the best hemodynamic outcome, and certainly the sutureless valve compared well in, within the group. But certainly, again, they were not the one to provide the best, the best result. So basically, we, we can certainly say that uh, sutureless or T-valve may facilitate many invasive procedures, can reduce cross clamp time and carapomal bypass time, have got lower gradient compared to most of the uh, standard alternatives, and certainly are a good option for patients uh, because uh, being very simple right procedure, patient with a small aortic root. So can we really say that this is really the right choice? Well, I think there are a number of points we have to focus on. Of course, really, the key point seems to be we are going to save something like 20 minutes of cross clamp time. Do we think that today is really a crucial role in the, within, within the overall surgical procedure? Well, today we've got improved cardioplegia protection, we have good modern conduct of cardiopulmonary bypass, and really the management of the patient is very well standardized. So if you look again at the STS at that database, 2015 mortality on standard ortival replacement is the overall mortality in the order of 2.0%, so very, very low mortality. This is again an important point. What about the duration of a standard operation? Again, things have improved today on standard surgery, and certainly we can use a single shot cardioplegia today, which of course shortens the time of the cross slam, because again, instead of repeating cardioplegia, we don't have to repeat the cardioplegia. And also, today we can use automated uh, suture fixation. You can see this is one of our patients, mini thoracotomy for aortic valve replacement. In fact, you can see we're using the core knot, which of course make the uh, knotting uh, phase easier and certainly much, much faster. Next point, the 20 minutes, say, the shorting time, does it balance the difference in, in morbidity? As we have seen, if this is really in most of the paper, there is set a higher rate of valve-related pacemaker implantation, and there is the possibility of a high risk of perivalvular leak compared to a standard valve. And if we take the data from the uh, partner to trial, we know that the presence of perivalvular leak is going to impact on the long-term survival of patients. And then, what about the cost? Of course, this is an issue that has not been addressed. I mean, this valve is going to cost at least twice more than a standard valve. Th there is a value in terms of saving on, on the other side. Well, certainly, if we think that uh, the sh operating anything short, maybe. What about less transfusion? Maybe. Shorter ventilation and intensive care time. But really, probably the length of time that we are going to say is not long enough to justify all this saving, and probably so therefore the cost of the valve is going to impact on the overall cost of the operation. And finally, the last point I want to make is the longevity of the valve. Again, here we don't have any data. Uh, certainly, we can say that in terms of durability, the, long, the early and midterm results are satisfactory. But of course, I mean, the crimping of the valve, we don't know it's going to impact on the long-term duration of the valve. And therefore, really, we don't know at all what are going to be the need of repeated reoperation, adverse cardiac events, potential diminished long-term survival. Again, are all a question mark we need to sort of to find out with, uh, within the time. So basically, to conclude, I think that uh, sutureless valve are, it's another type of surgical implanted prosthetic valve. I think into my mind we cannot compare sutureless valve with TAVI. They are two totally different operations. Second point is certainly uh, the sutureless valve could be a good option for small aortic root and complex cases and probably the shorter operating time can help in uh, very, very sick patients. But we have to keep in our mind that there is a higher need for pacemaker implantation, at least at the moment, with the available valve, and there is a certain risk for the offer periprosthetic leak. And also, we need a longer-term follow-up to, to, uh, to evaluate durability and uh, benefit in the long term of these valves. Thank you very much.